what's up? Today I want to do a video on the ice paramotor for the S140. Again, the S140 is just the frame system and whether you do gas or electric, um, you know, it just depends on those two choices. You can flip between the two. So if you're flying gas for a while and then want to upgrade to electric, you can. That's good for if you're a little bit more cost sensitive. Um, at the beginning, the, the gas paramotor is going to be a little bit cheaper, really affordable, probably the best priced gas paramotor on the market. Um, but if you wanted to switch to electric later or vice versa, depending on long flights, short flights, you know, kind of depends up to you. It's great because the fra same frame can use, you can use both systems really easily and it's pretty easy to swap and you can share parts and all that stuff. So today we're going to do the ice perimeter. I got a Moster here. Um, same thing for Adam 80. The mounting is the same. Um, some small, very small changes like the, the pull start. But yeah, I just want to start kind of this is how it'll come in the box. Um, you got your your lower half frame and the upper half of the frame. And for the rest of the frame assembly video, like the spars and the outside net, you can refer to the previous video, the electric assembly, you did the electric there, but same frame, so all that stuff's the same. We're just gonna work on the mounting and the throttle system for the gas paramotor here. So we got our top half of the frame, the bottom half of the frame. You can see you got our cool gas tank here, all molded in there. Um, just fits in the same box, so super easy to do. And first thing we'll do, set this aside, is we are going to mount the motor to the frame here. So we'll grab the motor. We're going to take our motor mount plate with the primer bulb already built onto it. And we're just going to kind of orient the motor. So this is the top of the motor. We got our primer or our uh, carburetor up here with our fuel line in. And we're just going to kind of line that up. And what we need for the moster, we are going to need a little spacer. So just this just for the moster. We're gonna use that for the Adam 80, no spacer needed. Um, but what we're gonna do here is we can just take these, line them up. We're just gonna need one for each one. And we can go ahead and line this up underneath. And that should go something like that. So we got our primer bulb up there. It'll make it right to our intake. And now we're gonna grab the longer set of our M8 bolts and just kind of run those through. So real simple. We can just hand tighten them for now, get that in place. We'll do this one up top there. So pretty simple. You can see the vibration dampening kind of in effect. And then what we can do is just go ahead and give these a nice little hand tighten. I'd say 10 newton meters is fine or something like that. It's nice and tight. Make sure it doesn't go anywhere. You can use some Loctite if you need to, uh, but it's not necessary. And then we'll do the same thing for the other side and we're just going to mirror it. So it's going to look something like that. So now we got our other one on there, nice and tight. So we got both of our mount, motor mount plates on there. And now all we're gonna have to do is just line it up with the frame. So what we're looking at to line up is these four uh, holes right here on the edges with these middle ones on the back. So there and there, there and there on the back. And you can see which one they are because there's a large hole uh, for the, the nut. So we're just gonna line those up. All we're gonna do is grab our smaller M8 bolts and just run them through the back here. So we can go ahead and line these up, put one on, we can, and then we can actually just start the nut so it doesn't, make sure it doesn't fall off. And we're just gonna repeat that for all four corners here. So one there, one there, one there. Now we got all those hand tightened, we can just go ahead and give these a nice snug tighten. They're, they're lock nuts, so they shouldn't come loose, but you can uh, add some Loctite if you really want to. All right, so now we got all four of those tightened up and this is one solid piece. Um, now we can actually, we can keep working on it here on the ground if you wanted to, or we can actually just put it on our frame. So that's what I'm gonna do. Just take our lower half of the frame here. All right, line up these four standoffs and just slide it in place. It's you know, slide in place. And now what we can do even is uh, just lock these down. All right, so now that we've got the motor mounted to the top half of the frame, and we got it slid into the bottom half of the frame and clipped together, we can go ahead and work on our fuel line system. So pretty easy. This is just gonna slide over top of these barbs and the barbs are gonna lock it in place. So I'm just gonna do that kind of temporary for now. And then for the top half, if you come look around here, you can see we got a little fuel line section and we got our primer bulb back here. Same thing, slide that over top of the primer bulb. Make sure you slide down pretty good and make sure it locks in place. And you can use your clips there too. And then the next thing we're gonna do, is we're going to go ahead and run our pull start through the pull start block and these just come tied up from the factory try not to let this go or else it'll kind of suck it in you have to kind of rewound it 
Uh, but what we're going to do is just slide this through the hole there, pull this out, pick the length we're kind of comfortable with. Um, kind of right about there is good. I've already kind of cut this shorter. Then what we're going to do is go ahead and take the pull starter uh, rope, put it through this hole on the handle, grab that on the other end. Yeah, again, try not to let go of it. And then we're going to just tie a knot. You can kind of adjust this length how you want. There is this little white mark on the pull start to kind of give you a reference point and make sure you're not pulling too much past. Uh, you just want to make sure there's enough wound on the motor. But what we'll do is go ahead and make a knot in this. Make a simple knot. You can make it uh, so you can actually untie it later too after a bit of a pulling. I'm just going to do this kind of temporarily. And that'll just keep it from getting sucked through. So cover that up. Now with our pull start tied, we're ready to go ahead and pull start a motor once we get to that step. So now we're going to go ahead and grab our throttle. This is the off-grid aviation throttle, uh, 51 centimeters. So you can choose right, thr right hand throttle or left hand throttle. We're going to go ahead and do uh, left hand. That's typically what people use the most. Most righties use a left hand throttle so they keep their dominant hand free. Um, I think this is the best throttle on the market right now. So that's what we include with the ice pair motor. It's pretty simple. We got our throttle cable here and we got our grounding cable here. So we'll go ahead and get this out and attached. All right, so I got the throttle out of the box and we're just gonna run it, kind of route it right through the back of the frame here. It's kind of a preference thing, especially just depending on what side you do it on. But I like to just kind of do it right here because I will then uh, do a zip tie mounted and I'll just keep that nice and tight. But I'll run it right through the back and then if you come around this side, you can see how we'll connect it. All right, you can see we got plenty of extra cable, so we're just gonna cut that a little bit shorter just to help us out for now. Don't cut it too short, uh, but we'll get rid of some of that for now. All right, so we got our cable routed through here, and now we're just gonna mount it to the carburetor. So we got our nut and uh, our throttle cable, and we're gonna run it through this little hole right here. Well, you can see that. So I'm just gonna line this up. The cable's plenty long, but we're just gonna run it right through there now. And then we're going to go ahead and get our nut on the other side of it. And again, if you need any extra instructions, it's pretty simple. But uh, Offgood Aviation has some instructions that come with it and on their website. So that's going to be mounted. Obviously, you want to use a wrench to tighten it up, hand tight for now. But the only thing we have to do now is run it through this little lever. And we're going to put a cap on the end of this, and that's going to pull our throttle. So you can see how that works. So... I'm going to go ahead and get a little cap on this and run our little brass nugget in there per the instructions. All right, so now we got our throttle cable all tightened up and the throttle works well. Now we can go ahead and take our kill switch cable and plug it into the, the kill switch spot on the back here. Uh, this is that little spoke there. I'm going to plug it in. Again, you can refer to the off-grid aviation throttle. It's good. It's got detailed instructions. All right, so now that we've got our throttle all hooked up, we got our pull start cable run through our pull start block and we got our fuel line system all plumbed in. The motor's mounted to the back, obviously. That's it, it's as simple as it gets, whether it's a Moster 185 or an Atom 80, same mounting plates, very similar setup. And for the rest of the frame, it's exactly the same as the electric. So uh, whether you're doing gas or electric, frame's the same. So you can refer to the previous video on how to assemble uh, the frame and we build out an electric unit there. All right, so if you have any questions, feel free to comment below or if you want to email us at info at openppg.com, we'll get back to you soon. So see you. Bye.